Manage Engine AD Manager Plus, Active Directory Group Policy Objects. In this video, I will introduce you to Group Policy Objects and brief you on why Group Policies are needed. Components of Group Policy Objects. The various areas where Group Policies can be applied. Advantages of using Group Policies. What are Group Policies? In simple terms, Group policies make allow us to configure settings for a specific set of users and computers that are part of an Active Directory domain. They allow us to set policies or specify standards in one place and make it apply across a target set of users and computers. For example, we can enforce a standard set of configurations or settings to apply for users or computers in a domain or OU or across the entire Active Directory, as per the requirement. Why Group Policy Objects? Every organization, immaterial of its size and complexity, will have users belonging to different departments or functions or groups based on their roles, responsibilities or projects will means each group of users will have different software and application requirements and needs. Similarly, computers and servers will also have to be configured and managed for specific purposes or needs like specific applications, kiosks, general usage, etc. With such varied requirements, privileges and purposes, administrators must set, manage, monitor and maintain a different set of settings for different groups of users and computers. With Active Directory Group Policy Settings, administrators can apply and manage separate and unique set of settings, configurations for different groups of users and computers easily and efficiently from a centralized location without actually having to repeat the process for every computer and user. Group Policy Architecture There are two components in Group Policy Architecture. Server Component Client Component Server Component Known as Microsoft Management Console Snap-in. The Snap-in is used for specifying the Group Policy settings. The MMC Snap-in can be used to specify policies to control and manage the following areas, and administrative templates, security settings, IP security, scripts, software installation, Internet Explorer maintenance. Each of the above area is called an extension and each of them in turn can have a child extension, which allows addition of new component or updating an existing component to the group policy without affecting or jeopardizing the entire group policy as a whole. Client Component That interprets and applies the group policy settings to client computers and target users. Client-side extensions are the components running on client systems and are responsible for processing, interpreting and applying the settings to all the objects mapped to a specific Active Directory container. Following are the default client-side extensions or components, and administrative templates, software installation, security settings, folder redirection, scripts, IP security, Internet Explorer maintenance, disk quotas encrypting file system EFS recovery, remote installation, quality of service QoS packet scheduler. Client-side extensions are implemented in DLLS which are installed and registered in client machines during the OS installation process. The group policy engine triggers the group policies by calling the corresponding DLL from the registry using the corresponding component registry settings. And administration of GPOS. Group policy administration is accomplished using two consoles or tools. The Group Policy Management Console GPMC, which is used to create and manage group policy objects. The Group Policy Object Editor, which is used to configure and modify settings within any group policy object. Group Policy Linking Any Active Directory implementation will have at the simplest, a domain and a site. While domain is a logical grouping of objects pertaining to a specific area or function as per the organizational structure, the site is a physical grouping of objects based on their geographical location. Often, the users and computers in an organization are segregated into different domains or organizational units based on their departments or functions or products, etc. Each of this domain or OU can have a single set of group policies or a different set of group policies for all the domains. OUs. In such cases, a separate set of group policies is created for each of the required domain or OU and link each GPO to the corresponding domain or OU using the Group Policy Management Console.
Group Policy Inheritance Inheritance is nothing but the propagation of an object, properties and qualities to its child objects. For example, the properties, rights and privileges of a group apply to all its members and also all its child groups. Similarly, in group policies, a group policy that is applied to a domain will apply to all its child domains, and the chain of their subsequent child domains and all the OUs and their child OUs. GPO Settings Group policy settings are grouped under two heads. Computer Configuration These settings are specific to computers. These settings will take effect on the computer every time an user uses the computer. User Configuration these settings are specific to users and will apply to the user's immaterial of the place or system that he logs in from. Whenever a policy setting is edited, there are three options that follow. Enabled. The policy will apply and the settings will take effect on the target set. Disabled. The policy will not apply on the target set. Not configured. The policy setting is undefined and so it will not have any impact on the target set. Group Policy Refresh Group Policy is refreshed periodically, usually after the specified Group Policy Refresh interval to make sure all the changes to the Group Policy objects are updated to the Group Policy. Group Policies are applied every time an user logs on and every time a computer starts up. Apart from the normal refresh after the set Group Policy Refresh interval, the Group Policy Refresh can also be forced or done on demand using the command gpupdate.exe. The different group policy options. At the beginning of this video, we saw the different GP components available. Let us now look at each of them briefly. An administrative template. This setting helps in configuring or specifying the desktop options, appearance, operating system, system components and application available. Windows has a set of predefined group policy settings which are stored as .adm files, which can be used to set group policies. Security Settings These settings are used for setting and enhancing the security measure on computers. There are different types of security settings. Account Policies To control password management policies like minimum password length, special characters, password life etc. Account lockout policies like maximum allowed bad password attempts, lockout time, etc. Local policies. To control user rights assignment, audit policies and security options. Event log. To control application, system and event log settings. Restricted group. Conditions for memberships to sensitive or critical groups. System services. To control system services and their execution. Registry To control access to registry keys File system To assign and control permissions to files and folders IP security policy This policy is used to set security standards on computers for communication over the Internet for data integrity, confidentiality and authentication. Software restriction policies these settings are used to control the types and functionalities of the softwares running on the computers and the containers that are linked to this GPO. This policy helps to maintain the security levels and also reduce the risk of attacks from unknown softwares on the computers in the network. Wireless Network Policies These policies help in configuring the wireless network by specifying the security settings, and preferred networks which can be downloaded by the computers which are part of the network or domain. Public Key Policies This setting is used to ensure that computers on the domain or network request, and, install an enterprise-wide certification certificate which will be used in the distribution list to establish the identity, and, trust among the computers of the network. Software Installation these settings are used for users and computers to control the applications or programs that they can install, control when to install the program, during logon, on start or on demand and also for upgrading applications, applying patches or to remove unwanted applications. Scripts This is used to automate certain tasks or activities like, starting application or system services, backups, etc. at user logon or logoff startup or shutdown of computers. 
disk quotas. These settings help in restricting the hard disk space that is available for each user. Quality of Service QoS Packet Scheduler This setting ensures usage of the network or domain resources effectively and efficiently to make them available for critical applications or services without having to make them wait or repeat their operations or requests. Using Group Policies What do organizations actually get? With this brief on all the important group policy settings, and, the clarity that they have so many advantages, let me now, tell you how, with all these settings, group policies actually translate into benefits for organizations. Group policies, some advantages. Centralized control of settings and configurations. Ensures consistency of configurations and settings. Easy application of settings as all the settings are applied from one central location. Greater transparency in management. As the control of user and computer accounts can either be done from a centralized location or delegated to a specific container, it is easier to keep track of the settings and controls that are being applied. Enhanced productivity. As the user is given the applications and settings specifically required for him, it leads to increased productivity. Also, as the settings are applied from a central location, the system administrator also has to spend less time on trivial, repetitive tasks which makes him concentrate on critical tasks. Reliable and enhanced security. As the security measures are centralized, updated at periodic intervals, standard across the entire boundary, the security is reliable and efficient. Cost and time saving. As all the settings and configurations are automatically applied every time a system starts or a user logs on, there is very little time lost in applying these settings repeatedly to a target set of computers and users which otherwise would need more technicians to accomplish the task and also more time which would only add to the cost, both time and money. A quick recap. To look back, I kicked off the session with an introduction to group policies. Allow us to configure settings for a specific set of users and computers in a network or domain. Then proceeded to tell you why we actually need them. Can apply and manage separate and unique set of settings, configurations for different groups of users and computers easily and efficiently from a centralized location without actually having to repeat the process for every computer and user. I then introduced you to the architecture of group policy and how they can be administered, linked and refreshed. I then walked you through some of the important group policy objects or settings viz, and administrative templates, security settings, IP security policy, software installation, disk quota management, quality of service, etc. And finally, you were able to know the actual benefits of the group policy objects like centralized control, greater transparency, enhanced productivity, security and savings in cost and time. I sure this video would have given you a brief understanding about Active Directory group policy objects. Contact us for any queries or any information that you might need. Thank you.